Hi, welcome to Home Tech Adventure. I try to give you the best advice on the internet to buy, build, use, and maintain computers and related equipment in your home. Hopefully, through my tips and advice, you can gain the confidence you need to take better control of your technology equipment. Today, we are going to use the Mac operating system and a program that's included with the Mac operating system called Preview to shrink a photo down. We're going to do it with three different scenarios. One scenario is to just reduce the size of the photo, perhaps for posting online on an ad maybe for Craigslist or for eBay, or maybe posting on an internet forum or something like that. Second, we're going to crop a photo of me <laughs> down to 300 by 300. That seems to be a popular size. It's a square size, but it seems to be popular for forms and other things that you need online. 300 by 300, it can be anything. It could be 800 by 800, 400 by 400. We're going to do 300 by 300, just show you how it's done, but you can do it with any other size. Then we're going to do the more difficult thing, at least with the program we're using today, and that is to crop to a specific screen size. We're going to pick 1080 by 1920, that's full HD size, uh, for perhaps you needed to take a photo and use it in a video, or you needed to post it online and they wanted that particular 1080 by 1920 size. We're going to crop it to that size. So stay tuned for the full details. Now that I'm in the Mac operating system, you can see the two photos that we're going to work with today. I got this computer photo and the test photo of me. So let's look at the computer photo first. Uh, you might have it in the Photos app though. I have it on the desktop and you really want it in a folder or on the desktop or something when you work with this. If you have it in Photos, let me take a look here. Um, I, like I have it here, just click on it and choose File, Export, and choose Unmodified Original, and then Export and then just direct where it's going. You can direct where it's going like you normally do and then export original photo. Now, if I take a look, are those the same thing? Okay, I, I hate when, that it opens that up again. Anyway, is it the same thing? This is the new one. We had the old one. Let's take a look. Let's get info on that and let's get info on this one. And you can see they are exactly the same size. So it's exactly the same photo. Um, so you want to export the original so you can work with the original when you're doing this. Now we're going to make a duplicate and I'm going to start with this original one and show you just go there and choose duplicate because we're going to work with the duplicate because then if something messes up we can go back to the original. Now if you had it in photos you, or you could go back into photos and re-export again and it'll export it again if you want as your backup but we're going to choose this and we're going to change the name. We're going to call it, uh, it's a computer photo one, but we're going to call it computer photo one web, meaning that we're going to size it for use on the web. Say we're going to sell it or something like that. So let's use this one and modify this one. Now it's really easy to shrink this down for the web. Um, usually you just need to do adjust size. You can see it's 4.6 megabytes and you can see the width and the height are 6,000 by 4,000 pixels right now. I like to target about 1,000. I usually use 1024 because I'm kind of old school and I remember the 1024 by 768 screen resolution. Some of you might remember that, but that's still a good size for on-screen photos for web use and stuff like that. So if you look, it should get down to 106 kilobytes. Now that's going to be much easier to upload or download for somebody with a slower internet connection. And that's what you want for a web photo like this. Now you see it went really small uh, because it's at the same size, uh, you know, zoom that we chose before. We can zoom in on this to see what it looks like when it gets a little bit bigger. And you might be able to see it's lost a little bit of, you know, fidelity, but it's certainly acceptable for an on-screen photo for somebody that's looking to buy this product it's something good enough that you don't have to do much more. Uh, if they need like super high resolution photos, I suppose you could send them more, but this is perfectly fine for displaying the product and that type of thing. So let's close that out. That's good. Oh, we want to save though too. Click uh, file and then save, or you can hit command S, but you want to save that before you close it. 
Now let's check and see that it actually did get to the right size get info. Uh, it's 152 kilobytes, a little bit bigger than what we saw there, but hey, that's really small, isn't it? That's great, that's easy to upload. Um, and there might be limits that depend on what you're uploading to. There might be limits on how big you can do it. All right, so let's work with the test photo now. On the test photo, um, we're going to duplicate it twice. So duplicate it once, and we'll put that down here. And then we're gonna duplicate it again, because we're gonna do two different things with this photo. Okay, so we got our test photo, and then test photo copy, we're gonna call this test photo 300 by 300 because we're gonna make this 300 by 300 pixels as if we were posting it for use with an icon or some form or something like that that we had to have. And this one, we're going to make 1920 by 1080, as I mentioned earlier. So copy, let's go 1920 by 1080. Okay, so there we go. So now we know what we're gonna do, but we keep the original original so that we can go back to it if we mess up. So test photo. Now we're gonna make this 300 by 300. This is very simple. You need to open up this toolbar here, the markup toolbar. And if you don't have this little icon with the pen showing, uh, you can go into view and show markup toolbar down here. But I'm gonna do it with the little pen icon there because that is showing on my copy of preview. By the way, it opened right up in preview because I have that set as the default to open images. If you don't, right click and choose open with, and uh, where is open with? Um, there it is, right at the top. Okay, and then you can choose preview from there. Preview is my default. It's probably your default, but not necessarily. So go there and choose open with if you need to, to choose the default size. All right, let's uh, modify this. You want this selection tool right here, the rectangular selection tool, little dotted box in the corner there. Click rectangular selection tool, and then click hold down the shift and drag. The reason you hold down the shift is because then it'll give you a square box. Now, it does not matter how big you make this box. We're gonna change, we're gonna change the size later, but we just need it to be square. Okay, that's, that's gonna look really silly. Uh, that's a little too close on my face there. So click, shift, and then drag. And there we go. Okay, so well, maybe a little bit bigger on that. It is gonna be 300 by 300 though, so we don't wanna make it too big. So maybe maybe just a little bit bigger. Yeah, that, that'd probably do about right. Okay, so there's gonna be my photo. That's how I framed it. By the way, did you notice how I moved that? I just click anywhere in the center and you can move the box anywhere you want. If you want to resize the box, you click a corner and because we wanna keep it square, you hold down the shift and then click or click and then shift. But before you move, you gotta hold the shift and the click on the mouse and then drag it to the right size. Okay, so now that we have the right size, we're gonna crop it. Click crop. Now, is that 300 by 300? No, it's quite a bit bigger than that because this was an enormous photo. It came from a nice camera. So all we have to do is do what we did before, which is adjust size. And you can see it is square. It's 2190 by 2190 now. Let's just change that to 300 by 300. And the aspect ratio is locked, so it'll change both at the same time. Type in 300, click OK. And again, it gives us a puny teeny little thing there. Let's zoom in and see what we got. And I think this one, you can definitely see the loss in quality. At 300 by 300, there's no way around losing a little bit of quality. But remember, when you see it online or in a form or something, it's probably not gonna be any bigger than that. It might be that big, but it still looks perfectly acceptable. So. Let's save, I'm gonna hit Command and S to save and you'll see the little edited thing went away up here. So that's done with that. So now we got our 300 by 300 photo. Now let's edit the 1920 by 1080 one and crop that to the right size. So double click on that one and we want to first adjust the size. We want one of the dimensions at 1920 or 1080. So the width 1920 and you notice it changed the other one because this aspect ratio is still locked. You want to keep that locked. If you change both by unlocking it, what you will do is either squish yourself uh, in height or squish yourself in width and you will look very funny. So don't do that. Keep it, uh, keep it locked on the aspect ratio. Now the height is plenty high. Now what if we put 1080 in here? we don't have enough width to make up the 1920 by 1080 form. So 
We're going to do it the other way. We're going to go 1920. And then it gives us plenty of height to do our crop. So let's click OK. And let's make that a little bigger by zooming in now. And I don't want to make it too big because, oh, no, that's too big, uh, because I want a little white space around for doing this particular thing. We're going to take the same rectangular selection tool now, and we're going to try to make it exactly 1920 by 1080. So let's click that again, and let's see if we can do it. So let's get 1920. There we go, 1920 exactly. You might have to fiddle with each side to get the exact 1920, because if you go off the edge, it stops counting pixels because there's no pixels there. Um, now let's make it 1080. Let's drag this down a little bit because we want to do it. Don't drag all the way to the bottom. Drag it, you know, near the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom. Because if you drag it all the way to the bottom again, it will stop counting pixels and you'll get an inaccurate size. So let's go 1080. Oh, I'm really close, aren't I? Wow. Okay, 1080 almost. Yeah, come on. Just moving the mouse just a little bit. Oh, I almost just passed it. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay. A little fiddly with this program. I wish I could just type it in, but on this program, it seems that's the only way to do it. So then you just hit crop and that crops it to the right size or did it. Let's double check. Go tools, adjust size and check and see what size it is. It is exactly 1920 by 1080. So we're good. Now, if it didn't, you can just click OK here and then choose undo. Go file and then, uh, no, it's in the edit menu. Undo size change, command Z. Um, or you can just hit Command Z until it goes back to the, the aspect ratio we started with and then start all over again and do it again. Okay, so you can do this multiple times if you need to to get the exact 1920 by 1080. But once we got that, let's save it, Command S. And let's close that. But there's one more thing with that. It might be too big still because 1920 by 1080 is quite, um, quite a large uh, screen size. So you can see it's 725 kilobytes on disk. What if we needed to go say under 200 kilobytes for a particular thing where we had to submit a photo and it has to be under 200 kilobytes or something like that. So we can do that. Let's open it up again and go file export. And then we can adjust the quality here. Now this won't change the size. It'll just change the quality and the size will um, remain the same. So let's just see what we got. Okay, so I dropped the quality a little, got it down to 340 kilobytes. We're going for under 200. So 297, 230, 209, 187. Can I get a little higher? 204, just a little bit down, 190. Okay, that's probably good enough. And test photo 1980 by, uh, 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna add a little thing on here because I'm exporting this, I want it to be a different file name. So I'm gonna call, call it small. And we're going to do it on, oops, gotta click that again. Gonna do it on the desktop. So, oh, I got it over here on the shortcut. So let's just do it on the desktop and save it there. There we go, it's over on the desktop. So let's close this. And if I take a look, get info on this, let's see if we got it under 200 kilobytes. We did, about 180 kilobytes on disk. So that's done. Now, is it good enough quality? Well, let's, Take a look. If I really make this big, enter full screen. Um, yeah, I'd say it's decent enough quality. Probably lost a little quality from that shrinking down with the, the quality on the JPEG, but it works just fine. I hope you had fun on this home tech adventure. I really do try to give you advice and tips so that you can gain confidence on your own home tech adventure.